Hey creators, I'm Cynthia Fisher of Creative View. But today, I'm here with a free video tutorial for the Tiny Pandora design team. I can't wait to tell you all about it. In this video, I'll show you how I made these pretty, romantic, heart stick pins. To make the stick pins, I used the Tiny Pandora Heart Lots of Love Bundle and the Tiny Pandora Leaf Mold Earrings Kit, as well as the Lisa Pelvelka Love Letter Texture Stamp. All of these fun products are available at the Tiny Pandora Crafting Boutique, www.tinypandora.com. Here's a few other things you'll need. About 1.5 ounces of fuchsia polymer clay, 1.5 ounces of white polymer clay, and 1.5 ounces of pearl white polymer clay, as well as a small amount of green clay. You'll need a tissue blade, cornstarch, and a small amount of liquid clay. You'll need a texture sponge, a makeup applicator, or small paintbrush, a small amount of brown acrylic paint, water-based, a small amount of rubbing alcohol, some stick pin findings, paper towels, and Q-tips, or cotton swabs. Once you've gathered all your supplies, we can get started. Start by rolling your white clay out to the thickest setting on your pasta machine. If you don't have a pasta machine, that's about a quarter of an inch thickness. Then roll your fuchsia clay out to the same thickness. Use a small circle cutter to cut five circles from the white clay. Then cut five circles from the fuchsia clay. The pure white and the pure fuchsia circles will be used to make the lightest and the darkest color roses. Cut four circles of white clay and one circle of fuchsia clay. Mix them together to create the second lightest shade of fuchsia. Next, cut three circles of white clay and two circles of fuchsia clay. Mix them together to create a slightly darker version of fuchsia. Then, mix two circles of white clay with three circles of fuchsia clay. This will create an even darker version of the fuchsia. Finally, mix just one circle of white clay with four circles of fuchsia clay. This will create an even darker version of the fuchsia. When you've finished mixing, you should have a nice array of dark, light, and medium shades. Varying shades like this helps to create contrast and interest in a design. Fill a clean sock or knee high with cornstarch. Then use it to apply the cornstarch to the smallest rows on the rose mold. Press a small amount of clay into the mold. I suggest you start with white, your lightest color. Use a blade to carefully trim off any excess clay. Then turn the mold over. Fold it and twist it until the molded rose falls out. I did this over a tile with a sheet of patty paper on it. Repeat the molding, demolding process with all of the shades of clay. I'm a production worker, so I made 12 roses in each shade, but you'll really only need a few of each. Once all the roses are molded, bake them, tented, at the manufacturer's recommended temperature for 20 minutes. When the roses are baked and cooled, Roll out the pearl white clay to the thickest setting of your pasta machine. 
about a quarter of an inch thick. Apply some cornstarch to the clay and to the Lisa Pavelka love letter texture stamp. Place the stamp over the clay and press down to secure it. Then use a roller to firmly roll over the stamp. Carefully remove the stamp from the clay, revealing the texture. Place a piece of plastic wrap over the clay and smooth it out to get rid of any wrinkles. Use the heart cutters to cut out as many heart shapes as you'd like. When you've finished cutting out your heart shapes, carefully remove the plastic wrap. Then remove any of the excess clay. Sometimes when plastic wrap is used, the cutter won't go all the way through the clay. So you may have to use a craft knife to trim out the shapes a little bit. Use your fingers or a clay shaper to neaten up the edges of your heart shapes. But don't bake the heart shapes yet. Begin placing the baked roses on the heart shaped, but don't press in. You just really want to get an idea of where you'd like to place them. You don't have to use every shade of your roses, but you do want to make sure that you use enough shades to get some contrast and interest. Once you've placed your roses, use the green clay to mold some leaves. Now I used Primo Olive Green and I used the smallest leaf from the Leaf Mold Earrings Kit. You'll need five or six leaves. Remove one of the roses from the heart. Use the makeup applicator to apply a very small amount of liquid clay to one of the leaves. Place the leaf onto the heart and then press down gently with your finger. You can add a little curl to the tip of the leaf if you'd like. Repeat with one or two more leaves. Then use the applicator to apply liquid clay to the back of one of the baked roses. Be pretty generous with the liquid clay. It really helps when you're trying to adhere the cured roses to the uncured heart. Continue adding leaves and roses until you're happy with your design. Then bake the heart at the manufacturer's recommended temperatures, tented, for at least 30 minutes. When the heart is baked and cooled, roll out some fuchsia clay to the medium setting of your pasta machine, and then cut two hearts from the fuchsia clay. Apply some liquid clay to the back of the cured heart. Then place one of the raw fuchsia hearts on the back of your cured heart. Press from the center outward to remove any air bubbles. Don't worry if it doesn't fit perfectly at this point. We'll trim it later. Apply some liquid clay to the pin back finding. Then firmly press it into the raw fuchsia clay. Then apply more liquid clay to the pin back. Then place the second fuchsia heart over the pin back and press down firmly. Again, you want to work from the center outward to remove any air bubbles. Use a clay shaper to snug the clay around the pin. Use a texture sponge to thoroughly texture the clay. Carefully use your blade to trim any excess clay from the sides of your heart. 
Then cure the heart. Tented. Face up. At the manufacturer's recommended temperature for at least 30 minutes. When the heart is all baked and cooled, use the makeup applicator to apply small amounts of brown paint to the writing in the love letters texture stamp. Then use a paper towel to wipe off as much excess paint as you can. Finally, use a Q-tip dipped in alcohol to remove any excess paint. Once all the excess paint is removed, your stick pin is ready to wear or give away as a gift. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please be sure to check out all the other tutorials on the Tiny Pandora Design Team YouTube channel. The design team has created lots of wonderful free tutorials for you. So make sure you subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, like, and share. Until next time, keep creating!